Yeah, I just make it that. So welcome everybody to the SVE Global Demo Finale. This is a great day everyone has been waiting for for the last six months. We had monthly uh, pitch rounds. We selected one winner in each month. Now all those winners are coming together on this finale. So we have this panel we just heard from all of them. Uh, and now we will listen to the live pitches. We have six startups who will be pitching today. Great founders, great ideas from different sectors, agri-tech, food tech, clean tech, health tech, all areas are being covered today. Uh, every founder gets 10 minutes. So the faster he finishes the pitch, there'll be more time left for the judges to ask question answers. And then uh, after all the pitches are complete, uh, we'll take the uh, feedback from the judges. And we also have audience leaving comments based on everything we will announce the winner tomorrow. So let's uh, get going with the first startup. Uh, Wilson? Hi. Hi. So we'll start with you, Wilson. Are you ready? Sure. OK. So um, let me share my screen first. Give me a second. I made a mistake the previous time. Okay. All yeah, right. Can you see my screen? Ten minutes, Wilson. Try to finish quickly so that there's good time for Q and A. Sure. Okay, you can start. All right. Good afternoon. I'm Wilson from Evertech. Evertech is trying to transform agriculture with crop intelligence. We are solving two key problems in the agriculture industry crop waste and poor sustainability. Firstly, crop waste arises from poor information flow across the supply chain because data is collected manually. Billions of dollars have been wasted from not knowing when to spray, when to harvest, and when to deliver. Secondly, plantations engage in unsustainable farming methods to bolster yield, using excessive pesticides and engage in poor farming practices. We believe the solution is agriculture and the founding team has been solving this problem for the past three years. That includes Randy, our CEO, a serial entrepreneur with over 20 years of software experience, myself from accounting and legal background, and Terry, a hardware and software engineer with numerous invention under his belt. Our team has grown from the three founders to over 140 employees now, spanning across four different countries. We have spread over 30,000 hectares, mapped over 300,000 hectares. To put that into perspective, Singapore as an entire country is slightly over only 30,000, 70,000 hectares. We have served around 30 clients with some of the largest plantations in the world, with some of the most best regarded partnerships around the region. So to enable this precision agriculture and to enable crop intelligence, it first works by automating the process of data collection and then to transmit and build this data infrastructure. With that, we'll be able to visualize, analyze, and provide predictive analytics for the managers to make better decisions. To deliver performance to our farmers, we reduce crop waste by firstly mapping, smart sensors, precision spraying. We help farmers change what, when, and why they make the decisions. So one example of this is precision spraying, where we first map the area, we identify the areas that requires remedy actions, and then we deploy the drones down to target this area. This reduces the chemicals and time needed by up to 90% and reduces up to 30% of the cost. By doing so, we help plantations enhance yield and contribute to sustainability. We focus on delivering value to our customers, plantation and farmers, but beyond that chemical manufacturers, seed producers, financial services, or benefit from our crop intelligence solutions to better serve their clients. This is a $94 billion industry, contributing to over 15% of emerging economies' GDP. Here are some of the crops that we are engaging in, and we're scaling across different crop types and to different parts of Southeast Asia. To do so, we are raising now $3 million to hire more talents to market and to deploy our solutions to our customers. Here are some of the market comparatives for reference. We remain to be one of very few companies that combines both area and ground data for crop intelligence. 
With that, I'd like to end my presentation with Call for Partners. We are already partners with some of the most respectable organizations in the world. We're looking for partnership with plantations, FMCGs, chemical companies, and other financing companies around. If you're interested, please reach out to us. Here are our contact details. We are Avertech, and we're here to deliver crop intelligence. Thank you. Thanks, Wilson. Uh, so we are open to question and answers. Just how do you correct. make money? How do you how do you charge for the value that you create? Um, we charge by per hectare basis. So our main customer are plantations and farmers. So we charge them based on per hectare that they own or do service. Um, at the same time, we provide solutions for seed manufacturers, chemical companies. What we do is we provide data for them. We provide data for them on what's happening on the plantations. And for that, we charge the license fee. And what are some of the benefits that you've realized or seen in the different plantations that you're already servicing? Have you been able to, for example, to increase the yield? And if so, by what percent? And how do you charge in relation to the value you create? Um, by mechanizing and using drones, you're yeah, easily saving up to 20, 30% of cost against labor, just direct cost. On top of that, they are getting opportunity advantage because every time they are getting delayed due to manpower shortage because they're not able to deliver on time, basically it's just land sitting down there and not being maximized, not maximizing the value of the piece of land they have. And that itself is a huge loss in terms of potential income. So net to net, you are talking about at least 30 to 50% increase in net yield over time. And, and how do you charge in relation to that increased value? That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, for us, we are, our business model is quite straightforward as of the moment. We charge by per hectare basis. So when we deploy the solutions, either via drones or the sensors, we gauge based on how big the land size of the customers and we charge based on that. So it's very straightforward for the customers to measure how much they will be expected to pay over time. Do you absorb the hardware cost or? Uh, uh, it depends. You... Most of the time we do absorb the hardware cost and then we charge them uh, on a monthly basis or rather a yearly subscription basis. Um, but at the same time, we do have customers who want to purchase the solution wholesale from us. And then we just charge a support fee subsequently. That's mostly for companies that has very high data privacy. They are not willing to share the data or not willing to host it on the cloud and so on. So what's your value? I mean, I'm trying to understand, is your value in the hardware? Is your value in the software you've provided? Because, I mean, hardware-wise, it's probably you've done an integration job, right? That's but right. That's on right. the software side is where I expect the value, but I'm, I'm <clears throat> curious, where do you see the value of your business? Absolutely. So software-wise, that's our core advantage. We are providing a lot of data that is previously not known for the owners. So for example, the topography information, the weeding process, knowing how much, or how, how's the weed enrichment to the current crop. And then you combine it with other data points, for example, what's the rainfall over time? What's the, is there any flooding effect? How much water do they have in their plantation? All these previously were a black box. They have no idea what's happening there. They rely on the manpower to feedback to them. You can imagine how much data, missing data they have all the time. And that's our real value proposition to them. I, I would imagine the value should be in yield per hectare. Absolutely. But it's hard for us to charge you per hectare, um, or rather it's going to be very long for us to prove it over time. Because imagine this cycle for a crop easily is two years. So we're not going to wait for two years to charge them, right? No, but you probably have historical data from previous customers so they can have a high level of confidence. And if it's yield per, he for per hectare, <clears throat> your real value is measured in production units and your, cost of, your costs are all of the software and hardware that goes into that. So your gross margin should be your share of the extra yield minus the costs. You are right. We should be moving towards that. If you can do it. So could you help me understand the, the, you know, where the core of your, of, your, of your business model is? Because financial services, that's kind of a commodity, but maybe there's an advantage in Southeast Asia. 
selling seeds, that's kind of a commodity, but maybe you have an advantage somehow. It seems like the core is really going to be in doing better spraying. Is that where most of the margin comes from in this business? Or, yeah, I'm just, I'm done. You, you have so many, you have this combination of very different businesses. And I'm just trying to understand because we don't that's see your financials where, you know, where the middle of the, of the business is. So what we do is we try to tie in different elements of the plantation process and help them to improve the overall output of the plantations or rather the output of the yield that they have. Right. So that's the reason why you see multiple points around. Uh -huh. um, we are not selling seeds. We are not selling chemicals. That's not what we do. What we do is we provide the data for them so that right. they know what to expect. So for example, the reason why I put in companies such as insurance, seed producers, is because they are now able to provide insurance for these smallholders, farmers. Previously, they have no idea what's happening down there. For them to provide an insurance solution, for example, it's going to be very expensive because there is no data in integrity within this um, ecosystem. Okay. What we do is we come in and we build in the data, we make it available. Now such a solution can be economically viable because they know how much rainfall they're getting, what's the spraying, or the SOPs, are they being followed? When the chemical companies sell the chemicals, were they done properly? But if that's, if that's true, then your customer cannot be the farmer. You're right. In the long run, we are looking at that. But right now, we have a direct value to the plantation and the farmers, which is why for us to sell to them right now is straightforward. And they're willing to pay for it. What are your gross margins today? What, so let's take a typical 12 months for a typical customer in one hectare. <clears throat> how much does it cost you to provide the service and how much revenue do you get? Uh, one hectare would probably be around 50 USD per hectare. To deliver the service? Margins. To deliver Sorry? the service. Is that the costs? No, no, no. That's, the, that's what we charge to customers. You charge. So Our what is your cost? Is 30%. And what is your cost of um, looking after one hectare? So our gross margin is approximately 30%. So it's around 30 plus dollars. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wilson, 